Today we're coming at you from the aquatic cave and we want to cover aquatic plant care and give you a couple of tips about some of the green stuff you should be keeping in your tank. Now basically why would you want to keep aquatic plants in an aquarium? Well why you want to keep them is because for one thing they're a great source of being able to absorb ammonium out of the water. Ammonium is a preferred nitrogen source for plants. That's obviously a problem for you when you start off a tank, especially new tank installations. So you want a source that takes in ammonium, this is a great living organism that will. Plants are also something that provide fish with shelter. They provide fish with a natural food source. They can be used as a natural spawning source for plants. And of course, most importantly, they compete with algae. So they take in a lot of the same nutrients that algae would, and they compete for lighting as well, which is another benefit too also reducing the amount of light algae could use to grow. Now a very important thing that you want to be aware of when you're buying a plant is first of all is it aquatic or is it semi-aquatic? Well a simple test that you can do, I'm just going to use my fluval plant tong here, pull out this plant, this bunch of Elodea which is obviously an aquatic plant. Why do we know that? Because when I try to hold it upright and let it go, it's just going to flop right down. So that shows you right away, it's a, it's a good basic test to see if a plant is actually aquatic or not. There are some semi-aquatics, like the sword plant that we have here is not truly an aquatic plant, but it survives and does very well underwater. Now, when you're planting a plant, obviously you need to plant it in a substrate for most plants, other than floaters. Uh, a two to three millimeter gravel, I don't know if you can catch this right over here, but two to three millimeter fine gravel is an ideal substrate for plants to grow in, as would be a coarse sand, or uh, we have something like our fluval stratum, which is a volcanic sourced soil, mineral rich product, which, which provides plants with a lot of the nutrients they require to grow, which they can take in via their root network. Tends to drive the pH downwards a little bit, which helps in harder, more alkaline waters. Provides plants with the growing conditions they need. And being a, a compressed type volcanic soil, the structure is very loose, so it allows, it allows the roots of the plant to migrate into the substrate very easily. Now, how to plant plants is another very important topic that we want to just cover a few basic points with, with you on. The easiest way is to break it down into types of plants to start, to start with. You've got bunch plants, again, like this Elodea. Now, when you're planting a bunch plant, a very important thing is obviously to remove the lead weight device that comes with them usually. Take off this wrap around that they put on so the plant doesn't get damaged. And then you remove, you can just gently take your fingers and remove or pick off the excess leaves that might be left. And uh, clean off the stems for the first inch and a half or two inches or so that you're going to sub, you're going to submerse this in the substrate for. That'll allow less chance or opportunity for decomposition of leaves and so forth. Uh, it's a good preventative method for that. So you, that's the ideal thing for a bunch plant. Strip off the leaves, no leaves in the gravel. Um, when you plant bunch plants, you want to plant them in small pots and groups so that you have light that can penetrate more easily down through the bunch to get the leaves that are near the bottom as opposed to taking an entire clump and putting it in there. Split it up in two and leave a little bit of space between the stems. Uh, Bunch plants are usually fast-growing species, so they're a good species to start your tank off with. New tank installations benefit a lot from them because they take up, as I mentioned before, ammonium, and they take up other macro elements very readily as well. So they help actually prevent algae growth the best. And when you trim these plants, what you want to do is obviously tallest in the back down to the smallest in the front. You can trim off tops when they start to curl up over the surface a bit clean the bottom leaves off for about an inch as I just pointed out and then plant the smaller bits in front and create that kind of staggered look that goes from back to front. Um, when it comes to individual plants with a crown, uh, we've got a good, good example right here. We've got an Echinodora species which you can clearly see the crown on and if you can just zoom in on this over here, got a bit of a whitish area where all the stems emanate out of, which is this point right over here. Basically the point at which where the stems start to come out, you don't want that submersed into the substrate. You want to have that above. So 
For example, if I took my tool, I could give you a little demo on, again, using the Fluval plant tongue. I could grab the plant this way and then simply submerse it into the substrate. And then I'll obviously arrange the roots later on, but you can push the plant right in and don't submerse the crown. Also, when it comes to uh, uh, plants with a crown, you want to make sure you give them room to grow. Uh, a lot of the Echinodora species, for example, sward plants get large. You want to make sure that you don't place them up against other plants. They need a couple of inches around themselves. Or if you're dealing with something like cryptocarines, they throw out a lot of runners. They spread out with a lot of small plantlets all over the place. They need room to spread and grow as well. Uh, floating plants. Now, I have uh, some Java moss here as an example. I'll just grab a little bit. Uh, although it's not commonly thought of as a floating plant, it actually makes a great one when you attach it to a cork. A piece of cork, you can put it in the corner, the cork will float, keep the java moss up, and then the java moss can often kind of anchor itself against the glass too. Now floating plants are a great way to control lighting. Uh, they'll keep growing until the point you see you've subdued the light entering the tank enough that you're going to have to trim them back. They're also a great shelter for fry. If you're breeding live bears or other free-spawning fish where you want the babies, you want to provide the babies with a chance to hide, Java moss is probably one of the best plants to do that with. And then, of course, last but not least, it, it calms fish down when you have plants at the surface of your tank. So basically, it'll help uh, prevent fish from jumping out and provides them with a relaxing atmosphere to live in. Okay, now we're going to cover a few points about positioning and choosing plants in your aquarium. When you're positioning, you basically want to go from back to front, tallest to shortest. And to provide you with the most visually pleasing type of setup, you want to have a meandering path or two between groups of plants so that you create or it helps you create a kind of a depth perspective. And, and within that empty gap, you want to situate a piece of wood or rock and it'll give you that depth that you're looking for and bring up that interest factor. Now when it comes to choosing plants, basically stick to a max of four different species of plants. If you've ever noticed some of the planting manuals or, or uh, sites online where you see some of the masters of the planting world, you'll notice that they really don't have a lot of different species in their aquariums. The display becomes a lot more dramatic when you limit the number of species of plants that you put in your tank. Feeding plants. Obviously food is an important element for plants. They require certain micronutrients. They need macronutrients. Tap water is often devoid of the essential micronutrients that plants need, iron being one of them. And the Fluval micronutrient solution that we have right here is an excellent product. One of the reasons why is because it's chelated. Chelation makes sure, or is a process whereby, the nutrients are going to be available to the plants very readily. So despite the pH level or whatever other factor could impact that, having them collated will make them easily absorbed by plants. So you want, a, you want a solution that's chelated like this product here. And in fact, our Fluval Plant Micronutrient Solution is made by Hagen in our facilities here in Montreal for ultimate QC control and product control and everything we do with this line. CO2. Fluval offers you a couple of different CO2 kits. Uh, this is our larger 88 gram model. Comes complete with a pressurized small cylinder, a bracket to hold it, a bubble counter, a regulator, and a diffuser. So it's a complete kit. CO2 is really, really important. And why is it important? Well, the natural equilibrium of CO2 and water and air is a, is a dissolved amount that is far less than would be optimal for plants. So supplementing it for the ultimate and lush, strong plant growth, the only way you're really going to do it is with CO2 injection. This kit is affordable, has got everything you require, and makes that actually an easy challenge. You're looking at maintaining 20 to 30 ppm, so injection is really an important thing to do. And one last point about this is the fact that plants are in fact 40 to 50 percent carbon by dry weight. So again, the ultimate, the most important macronutrient for plants. You can provide it in an easy to apply kit to most small to mid-sized aquariums. So that covers it. We've pointed out some tips to you about where to position 
plants, how to choose them, what an aquatic plant is, and of course some of the tools that you can use to help you manage uh, plants in your aquarium. We hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any other questions about aquatic plants or their care, please visit us at fluvalaquatics.com.